And today, a former atheist reveals the transformation from depression, obesity, and alcohol abuse. If you're struggling with out-of-control behaviors and it seems like simply praying that your problems will go away isn't working, you'll want to hear John, Robbins Murphy, or John Robin Murphy's breakthrough testimony today on Harvest. A self-described table-pounding atheist well into his late 20s, John Robin Murphy angrily rejected anything Christian, even though his life was spinning out of control. With the help of his soon-to-be wife, he gave his life to Jesus, which led to a progressive path of transformation. And John now devotes his time to helping others gain freedom. John, welcome to the Harvest Program today. Uh, tell us here. a little bit about, about your story, because uh, re even, even after you became a Christian, yeah. you still were struggling with some of the old habits and old, old ways of life. Right. Well, I think that it started off really with that sort of fresh, I'm a new Christian thing, and very excited about the promise of it. And it really... Uh, um, gave me a point of realizing there was a purpose to this and that I had a pretty miserable atheistic life and was glad to leave it behind. <clears throat> so I was very wrapped up into all the promises and all the excitement. About year five though, I'm going, well, I'm not feeling so good and what is this about and why, do, why am I still struggling with some of the things that I was struggling with before? You know, mm -hmm. what was, why is that baggage which I thought was left behind? And so that's when I really began the process of digging in and trying to understand really just out of you know, emotional discomfort and pain, trying to seek uh, what are the answers and why is it that isn't all the things that I believe, aren't those things really true? Um, what is it? So I began to dig in and I started off going to, I uh, found a Christian counselor who was able to sort of start me on the track of transformation mm -hmm. by dealing with unforgiveness, which was sort of the, the big ugly thing that was in my life was the sort of the first step and I had a little breakthrough there and then just sort of over a period of time evolved along and uh, mm -hmm. just kind of see how God's working and still finding things and still peeling back my onion and unpacking the things that I'm still working on. And I think it's a transformation is not a place where you arrive. It's uh, because it's, uh, as the book says, be transformed. We are being asked to be transformed so that we, we more and more reflect uh, the heart of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't arrive there, uh, you know, in this earth suit, as they say. Mm -hmm. But it's a path that we get on that is very fulfilling and it's very freeing. And we begin to operate in those truths that we, the things that got me so excited those first five years that brought me in, now I can see more of that being real in my life, more peace mm -hmm. and more joy and satisfaction and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. kind of uh, earlier on, we mentioned that, uh, and this may really <laughs> resonate with, with a bunch of friends that, that are watching today. Yeah. You know, they're dealing with uh, addictive behaviors or compulsive right. behaviors or... Yeah or habits that uh, they're carried through their, their mm -hmm. conversion experience right. and uh, come to the realization that, that praying that they go away mm -hmm. just, just isn't enough. Right. Yeah, the, um, the sort of the, how this all came together was really I was um, probably started about four or five years ago with my wife working in a drug rehab program, a Christian drug rehab program. It was a seventh month residency program. People would come in that were totally removed from their drugs, steeped in Christianity and love. And the failure rate at the back end of that was really very high. Mm. And it was very heartbreaking. And we we're trying to figure out what is the answer? Why is it? And what, what became clear in sort of that desperate moment of how do we help these people we're falling in love with is to realize that the heart that checked into the program was the same heart that checked out. Uh -huh. And so the things that were driving, the torments and things that were driving them because their heart was out of line with what God wants for their heart uh, we're still in place. And so you can wrap a lot of veneer and a lot of behavior management around things mm -hmm. and some of it in the Christian, uh, in sort of a, a Christian perspective as well. Uh, but if you have not actually been true to what you're called to do, which is forgiveness, for instance, if you're someone like me that was, had a lot of torment and a lot of discomfort, emotional discomfort over not being, not forgiving, well, those were driving a whole lot of my behaviors. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why I used to weigh 300 pounds and that's why I used to drink too much and do a lot of those things. But as I see that, as, uh, as I have been drawn into and have those little transforming moments where I have aligned my heart, which is in this case forgiveness, or I've done whatever it is that uh, uh, confessing um, self-righteousness and trying to restore that place of my heart, as I've broken down each of those places, those torments are removed and they don't drive that behavior, behavior. anymore. Mm. But you can't, you know, and it's true in the world as well. If you think about all the people that get involved with um, uh, weight loss programs, mm -hmm. and uh, and I went through several because I had that period where I was trying to struggle with weight through secular means, and uh, at the end of it, the weight always came back yeah. because the thing that drove me to overeat was never dealt with. Mm -hmm. I even went off to fat camp when I was like 13, <laughs> and those guys knew how to take it off of you. Yeah. I was getting there at the end of that period of time, but they didn't do one thing to help figure out and unravel what, why, you got why there in the first place. I went to yeah. that as the medicating solution to the things that were bugging me. Mm -hmm. And, and so many people in our society do fall into addictive behavior. What is right. it, oftentimes, is there a few common denominators that drive them to that place? And 
You said in your yeah. book that one of the things that brought you to the place of freedom is God simply speaking a word to you that you need to love him more. How does that, that play out in daily one. life? Well, just so overall, I think that if we look at our target as the heart of Christ, and I believe that a lot of times we get caught in Christianity running laps, mm -hmm. doing the things, you know, the appropriate things and doing the ministry work as defined by the church or whatever, and we kind of get into that routine. Um, but, the, the, but what is really all this about? The pursuing the promises is not the objective. The objective is to have the heart of Christ. And so I think that if you start looking back, well, what are those elements? Well, one is that we don't need, to, you know, we don't want to be rebelling against him. If God says forgive, that's not, that doesn't only occur when the guy comes and asks for forgiveness. That's a transaction between us and the Lord. We are called to forgive. And if we don't, to the extent we don't, we're rebellious. Well, rebellion is going to not be met with a peaceful heart. Uh, we fall in love with things. Um, I, idolatry. Idolatry. What I discovered, interesting, the one about loving God more, that was so interesting because uh, I'd come to a place where I felt like I was advancing along and kind of dealt with some things. And so why am I still struggling with this white thing? I still got a little, back a little more than I should be. And <clears throat> for me, the, uh, I just got this intense feeling that it, the message was love God more. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the legalistic, love me harder and figure out how to do more laps. That is love me more than you love anything else. And I realized that was a breakthrough. The guy, and it was validated in the, um, in the drug abuse program because the guys there love to get high. And as we worked with them, we had to break that and, and switch that priority or we'll move that one. But we need, to go, we need to get to a place where we do love God more than anything. That's a characteristic of Christ. Humility, critically important to pursue humility and to, to repent of self-righteousness. I found I had a load of that. In the ministry, in that, in that particular ministry, it was when I figured that out. And I had yeah. to repent of that and got a little relief on that level. So and in, those uh, kinds of elements. In your book, Be Transformed, you talk yep. a lot about uh, dis-ease. Uh, why don't you yeah. define that for us and kind of uh, apply it to uh, really uncovering maybe the roots of some of our issues? Yeah. Well, I think that... Uh, the scripture I probably reference would be the um, unmerciful servant, servant who was forgiven by the king but did not forgive the person who owed him the debt. Mm -hmm. and, the Lord, and at the end, people you know, don't want to focus a whole lot, but it says, Jesus says, and the Lord will turn you over as, you know, as it happened to the person, in the, as the servant in the parable. And I think that what happens is, is that th that's really a torment that is a God-centered dissatisfaction and discomfort. Mm -hmm. and, and you're not, God does not want us to be at peace when we are opposing him. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more we reflect, the more that we don't reflect the heart of Christ, we'll say, the more disease you're going to feel. Mm -hmm. And the way to, get, to take away that dis-ease is to align yourself with, with Christ and align yourself with what God has for your heart. And, and in the case of unforgiveness, it generated a tremendous amount of dis-ease. I, I think that the, it was sort of a play on words. I don't want people to feel like that I'm getting away or sort of confronting the whole disease Right, like alcoholism is, a, is it a disease, a disease or is it not? Mm -hmm. Well, what I have found um, is that <clears throat> people really are driven for a reason, mm -hmm. in, and it's not a chemical thing. And it's, it has to do with uh, a lie they believed about themselves, which is another key element of how do you actually get there. So it's you, a more of a heart thing, emotional, yeah, so psychological, all, soul, yeah. uh, spirit well, thing. Well, if you believe that you were worthless and that you were never going to make anything of yourself, how would you feel and how would that impact your decisions you right. make? Right. And so that's another one of the things we have to do is that Jesus said that Satan came to him and found nothing of him in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, he's the father of lies. Well, if we have a lie in us, we don't reflect the heart of Christ. Plus, it's an opportunity. It really represents a place where presence uh, where Satan can torment us. Right. Disease comes from all those places. Right. So there are a lot of different elements there. And that disease, disease drives mm -hmm. behavior, which right. brings us to a place of, of bondage. And yep. Uh, really, God's plan for us is transformation and to be conformed to the image of Christ. Uh, John's new book, Be Transformed, New Life Again, you can find it on our website, harvest-tv.com. You can also visit John's website at johnrobinmurphy.com right. right. uh, to get more information. I want to thank you for, for joining us today, oh, it's been John. great to be here. And Thanks. we've been discussing how to overcome unwanted behaviors in